Hi volunteers, it's Caitlin, your TC coordinator. We are here today at the Archives of American Art here in Washington, D.C. to talk about audiovisual collections um, here in their archives. Um, so here with me today is Megan McShay. She is the audiovisual archive archivist, excuse me, at the Archives of American Art. And we are here in the audiovisual workstation um, where they digitize um, and process audiovisual collections. So Megan's going to give us a little bit of background on the Archives of American Art and their audiovisual collections in general, and then we're going to talk further about the TC Sound projects that we have from Archives of American Art and see how they store all of these amazing collections. Okay, well, um, to start off, the Archives of American Art in general, a lot of people don't know about us, but we're a research collection here at the Smithsonian, and our collections um, contain material documenting the, the history of primarily visual arts and visual art culture um, in the United States. Um, and so we don't collect artwork like a museum, we collect documentation um, like letters and diaries and sketchbooks and audiovisual material. Um, and you guys are not the Smithsonian American Art Museum, correct? We are not the art museum. We are big fans of the art museum, yes. and their curators come and use our collections all the time in their research for exhibitions. But um, yeah, our collections are archival and not museum collections. Um, so people who come here aren't here to look at exhibitions, they're here to do research, and they pull our collections and um, spend days and days and weeks looking through our materials. And as we've seen over the past six years in Transcription Center, we have done a number of projects from the Archives of American Arts textual materials, um, like correspondence, diaries, letters from people like Gertrude Vanderbilt. We just finished some of those. We also have new projects up from female artists um, in Transcription Center, the Jacques Seligman records. Um, and now we're going to be expanding that to include even more of Archives of American Arts materials. Yeah, so we're really excited to have a couple of things up on the Transcription Center new sound platform. Um, we've been digitizing audio and video and film from our collections for about 10 years now. Um, and we're really fortunate now to have the capacity to create digital copies for researchers. Um, This is the equipment that we use to digitize media from our collections for researchers. So if a researcher sees something described in a collection on our website, they can request it and we can digitize it in-house for them to be able to access um, free of charge in our reading room, um, either here or in New York. We have a New York office as well. So, um, and this is, the reason why these two interviews on the Transcription Center are digitized is because they were, were requested by researchers. Um, so those collections are full of interviews um, that have yet to be digitized, but those specific interviews were digitized because of a researcher who made a request. Um, so here we're able to create files that uh, then we can ingest into the Smithsonian dams and <coughs> create uh, documentation of the individual item, um, and then the digital copy is there for, for the public to use, so anyone can use it. So we slowly are building these public resources as we work on collections. But yeah, most of the audiovisual material in our collections um, it wasn't made by professional audiovisual people, it was made by other types of professionals, art historians or journalists or artists themselves who are using media in the course of their work in some way. So the, the items that are um, available on the Transcription Center for transcribers um, are from the Judith Wilson papers and the Jan Butterfield papers. Those are both collections that are super rich with audiovisual recordings. Um, the 
Judith Wilson was an art historian, a really important scholar who um, focused primarily on African American artists and black visual culture in America, in the US. Um, and her interviews are, I haven't listened to all of them, but um, <laughs> the ones I have are um, just such a pleasure to listen, listen to. She's, um, has such rapport with her subjects and they are very candid um, and so they're extremely nuanced and rich uh, resources for research and the one that's up now is Sam Gilliam a super important artist uh, who's from right here in Washington um, <clears throat> was actually recorded she did multiple interviews with him um, we also have his papers here at the archives and much um, of his artwork is held at Anacostia and the Portrait Gallery and some at some other museums here in the Smithsonian as well, I think. Correct? Yes, yes, there, there are multiple places in D.C. that have um, his artwork. He was also an honoree of the Archives of American Art at their gala, um, gala, gala last year. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the, it's interesting to me that this specific interview um, with Sam Gilliam by Judith Wilson was recorded while she was doing research for an article on another important artist who is from Washington, Alma Thomas. Um, and so it's just an interesting example of just how nuanced and layered some of these, um, some of these recordings are. Um, and why will it be helpful to her papers and to this collection, but also the Archives of American Art in general to have this stuff transcribed? Oh, well, it's, um, first of all, we can't really share the digital media on our website unless it is captioned because we need for all of our website content to be um, accessible to all people regardless of their ability to hear. So we need captions to make it widely accessible. Um, but we also, uh, we ourselves aren't able to do captioning work and transcription work um, for all of the thousands and thousands of things in our collections because there are thousands and thousands of things in our collections. And only a few of you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm the only audiovisual archivist at the archives. Um, and I spend a lot of my time sort of sorting out collections and describing them so that they're discoverable. Um, and then digitizing things on demand and for preservation and we're sort of like slowly um, making our way through collections. Um, but for, for example, in the Judith Wilson papers, I think only a handful of her interviews have been digitized at all. Um, and there's, you know, almost 100 interviews in the collection. So I'm focused on that work and making it more accessible and discoverable. And because that's one of many hundreds of collections that I'm trying to do that for, and new collections are coming in all the time, mm -hmm. um, I'm not able to do the kind of detailed work where I get to focus on one thing and get a word-for-word -word transcript available so that people can do searches and so that it's accessible to everybody. Um, so it's incredibly valuable to have people making these transcriptions. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, do you guys have a lot of, like, what's the sort of range and scope of audiovisual materials here at the Archives of American Art? Um, I know we don't have a ton that are digitized yet um, in terms of the percentage, but how many in total do you think are here? Well, we do have everything counted, so we I can answer that question. <laughs> there's, um, there's probably... Uh, I just added some yesterday, so I'm not <laughs> sure the exact number, but it's about 23,000 wow. things across um, almost a thousand different collections here at the Archives of American Art. And that's including audio recordings, video recordings, and motion picture film. Okay. Um, the most plentiful uh, of those three is audio. We have more audio than anything else, about twice as much as we have. And the content is primarily, um, about half of it is interviews or lectures or spoken word um, recordings of okay. people, people talking to each other and about their work. So. so as we continue in Transcription Center and we reveal more of these stories and get down on that granular level like Megan is talking about, 
we'll be able to better understand the scope of the actual content of these collections. We'll be able to make more of these collections accessible um, with the help of Archives of American Art staff, specifically Megan working on these AV collections, um, and we'll be able to better advocate for more preservation and digitization in the future. So we're here in our storage area of the Archives of American Art, and I'm pulling out um, the box of the Jan Butterfield Papers that houses the Ansel Adams interview, which is available to be transcribed on the Transcription Center. So um, you can see all of these folders are full of recordings of her. In fact, we have four boxes full of recordings in this collection, um, and Ansel Adams is conveniently the first one. This is on an audio reel. This is quarter inch audio reel tape. It's a really common format for us. It was really popular format in especially 50s and 60s and 70s. Um, so we see it a lot. Um, and we have about 3,500 of them in our collections, a little more than that. Um, and we've digitized probably about 1,200 or so of those. Um, so we've got a ways to go and they keep coming in. Um, so here's the Judith Wilson papers in our storage area. Um, and she made all of her recordings on cassettes. So we have many, many book, uh, shoe boxes full of cassettes of her interviews. Um, and the Sam Gil Gilliam interview is right in here. Um, so this is a format that spanned many decades and was a consumer format. I'm sure many of your volunteers will recognize cassettes. Um, they're still not that old, um, but they are obsolete. Um, so we've got about 7,300 of these in our collections spread out across hundreds of different collections. Judith Wilson has almost 100 in hers. Um, and uh, we have maybe 1,500 or so of these digitized, um, some of them to preservation level and some of them just as access copies. Um, so we're happy to have them here at the archives because we're able to store things in climate-controlled storage. Um, Audiovisual material <coughs> is particularly sensitive to fluctuations in humidity and temperature, which accelerates their decomposition or degradation. Um, but I should say that no amount of climate controlled storage is really going to preserve these recordings. Um, it's better than if it were stored in somebody's attic or in a barn or in a garage, which is where a lot of these things spend most of their lives. <coughs> but to preserve this content, it really needs to be digitized. Um, so we need more resources to do that at the scale that we need um, to get all of these many thousands of recordings in a state that we can access now and in the future. So we've had an awesome behind the scenes sneak peek of Archives of American Art and their amazing collection storage and the amazing work that they're doing with their many, many audiovisual collections here. Um, we have the Ansel Adams and the Sam Gilliam projects still up in Transcription Center that need help being transcribed. And um, we'll be adding more projects um, as we move along this summer and into the fall. Um, so please keep an eye out for those. And remember that every uh, segment transcribed, every recording transcribed helps to make this material more accessible and helps us to advocate for the continued care and preservation of these very fragile, really important collections. Um, so if you have further questions, you can reach out to us at transcribe at si.edu. Um, we're also going to be sharing links for you guys to the Archives of American Art projects themselves, more information on TC Sound in general, um, and emails for Megan and the Archives of American Art um, reference account if you guys want to learn more about their collections. Um, so stay tuned, follow along on hashtag TC Sound, and thank you for your contributions, volunteers. Thank you.